Tom here from Lawrence Systems. Free NAS, as in true NAS. I still want to call it free NAS, but true NAS, the new conversions of free NAS and true NAS, has now reached 12.0 U1. Well, actually, it reached that on December 9th. I loaded my systems right away, and too long didn't watch. The updates went fine. I just like to get that out of the way at the beginning. I'm not a big clickbait kind of person. But if you want to know the details and some of the new changes, and not just bug fixes, but new features that they added here in the U1 update, uh, stay tuned. Before we dive into those details, first... If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. Over here on the AIX Systems blog post, they have everything detailed out. And boy, there is a lot of bug fixes. There's all kinds of goofiness with the reporting when 12.0 went into release. They seem to have solved those problems. I didn't use the reports that much. It's neat, but I mean, if you spend a lot of time in the reports and you notice there was definitely some problems with the browser rendering some of them and they would kind of get hung up. I think I talked about those in another video. Uh, but anyone who was messing around with the reports realized they were kind of broken. Uh, they fixed that problem, doesn't seem to be there like it was, and a whole lot of little UI issues and details that were kind of broken uh, here and there. And obviously some things that I didn't use were probably bigger issues, so definitely uh, update this. There's not any reason I can see not to, and I didn't experience any new problems. I'm not saying that they don't exist. They may have yet to be found though uh, with my systems and at least the use cases I have. And of course, under the improvement list, there's a lot of updates because some of the problems were initially, and I actually experienced a lot of this in the beta with my TrueNAS Mini, were enclosure notification systems. So they were uh, issues. Now, I also like the fact that uh, interfaces and scale and a lot of stuff around scale is mentioned scattered in here because yes, TrueNAS scale is on its way. People love asking me about it. It's in the earliest stages. So no, I'm not about to switch over to it, but uh, actively because the way they've modularized all the middleware, these updates do carry over to the TrueNAS scale series that is going to come out sometime next year. And I don't have any more insight than you would by looking at the public posting of the updates for it, but that is still on its way uh, to happening. But let's go over a couple highlights here. Um, obviously, enclosure management. OWASP support has been added for Gmail. This is obviously something that has a lot of impact on people who have Gmail as their back end and need to send notifications. I know G Gmail has been talking about getting rid of some of the, what they refer to as less secure apps and it's different transport layers to allow systems to send mail. That's why we need to have OWASP support, et cetera, et cetera. So this is getting worked into here. So that way, when that gets discontinued, there's still gonna be a way to use backend of G Suite and have it actually send you notifications. Uh, it hasn't been an issue we ran into. We're actually using third-party mail service, Mailgun, for those that are wondering, is one of them we use in uh, outbound.mailhop is another one we've used to get notifications so we didn't have to deal with some of the less secure apps uh, and wherever G Suite's going with that. Now, I feel as though this one here was added because of Wendell. Fusion pools have added a threshold for adding small blocks of data to the metadata VDEV. And I bring that up because, well, if you've watched my channel, you've probably watched Wendell's level one text, but I'll leave a link specifically to this. ZFS metadata, special device and you. Great video if you haven't watched it. Uh, very detailed write up over in his forum all about using uh, special metadata and where you want to move things for some speed issues. So that's kind of neat that they've added that. Like I said, I have a feeling that uh, Wendell's the reason for that. Oh, get back over to here. And we'll talk about what I showed over there in a second. Uh, automatic trim has been added as a new pool option. When enabled, TrueNAS will periodically check for disks in the pool for blocks that can be reclaimed. I turned this on. I haven't noticed any negative effects. It is off by default. Uh, so warning, if you turn it on and you have problems, uh, it can cause some performance. It's a new feature, uh, but it is kind of a novel thing that's in there. Uh, but at least it is off by default. Uh, that's actually a lot of times when you add something new, it may be off by default and you can add it later. Um, I think this is kind of neat. Maybe I'll dive into this at some point. Um, SNMP definitely had some resource issues, but they also added down below uh, SNMP to do some traffic monitoring using IFTOP. So putting some information in there so that enhance the SNMP. Not something I've done a lot on, uh, 
kind of related though, there is a book, I believe it's out now by Michael Lucas. He's actually an author of a few other books on ZFS mastery and SSH mastery and SNMP mastery. So I wanna read this book and then do some dives into it. I've also had him on the channel here for an interview. The guy is just an amazing technical writer. And yes, he does write some non-technical stuff that's uh, off topic and out of scope, but um, either way, his book on SNMP mastery is pretty, uh, is on my to-do list. Now including this release, OpenZFS 2.0. There's nothing you really need to do. If you've already built a new pool using TrueNAS 12, you have all the extra enhanced features. Uh, this update to 2.0 doesn't really change any of that. You don't have to rebuild any of the arrays. Now of note, I still have systems that are like this one here that was in place upgrades and there's not a way to do like the old data set encryption types, for example. Um, they will so are still supported if you do an in place upgrade from like the 11 series to 12. But if you don't build them new, you don't get some of those new data set enhancements. That's still a thing uh, that can't be redone. You have to rebuild the array for the encryption. But uh, the other features, like the trim feature, are supported both on the new version and the old version. It was opened up for there. And with the OpenZF test 2.0 and some of those features being added, uh, they're still being exposed, including, and this one's kind of neat, the replication changes. Uh, when you're doing replication target data set and they have a new option because this technically makes a video I did wrong when I said you can't selectively choose what can be replicated. This is part of the OpenZFS 2.0. I haven't dove into it because I, I understand it in concept. I've not actually taken it in practice, but they're starting to expose those features, uh, properties to exclude. So it takes time to build these features into the UI. There's, of course, it can be done from the command line because it's now part of the OpenZFS 2.0, but no, I've not tested it at all. And the concept is you're going to be able to do a replication, which is a great way to you know duplicate all your data on another uh, TrueNAS or anything that has ZFS. So you can do ZFS replication to another target device, but now you can do exclusions of things. And it's an uh, interesting process, like I said, out of scope of this video, but uh, definitely pretty cool. Now I've done a video on MinIO and they've actually added it now finally as a plugin. My video was how to manually set it up in a jail and configure it within FreeBSD. There's a little confusion I have on this though. And that confusion is, it says, and I've tried this both ways, uh, both as the plugin, the S3 native one that's built into the services and this one. And what it says here is confusing to me because when I'm looking at it, it says plus UI config of multiple user credentials. And I'm completely and probably missing where that is, but I didn't see it up here. And there's a little button I'm hiding down here, but it just lets you create buckets. I didn't see any option to create users. So that uh, confusing as far as like I can change password well, but it, actually I can't, um, but it's now an official plugin inside of here as well. So right here, we go over to the plugins and there it is official. But once again, something I wanna mention, we go over here and we're gonna uh, go into the console on it, Mineo demo, MC's missing. And if you're familiar with how Mineo works, MC admin, um, is actually the tool you use for adding some of the users. So I, like I said, it's gonna probably take a second video on me diving into it as a plugin. It's cool that they're further developing it and adding that on there because S3 as a target on your TrueNAS means, well, you can use quite a few products that will set that as their target option for storage. Uh, so if you're building an internal demo of something or you wanna do kind of your own self-hosted cloud type thing and maybe rent some racks somewhere and you, are developing applications that need S3-like storage, well, you can use S3 storage and use your TrueNAS as the target for that. Uh, really cool that they're further integrating it. And like I said, I have another video of how to manually set up a jail with this in there, and I'll link to that below as well. Definitely cool that it's now an official uh, plugin that's part of FreeNAS. And it's always been part of FreeNAS as far as that's what they're using on the back end for the uh, MinIO is the, when you turn on S3 under services as well. So more updates on that, definitely really neat. Now, not directly related at all, but something interesting that I know people have been wanting me to take a look at. I at least will mention that I have started testing with the TrueNAS command. Now, this is not a uh, project that's free. This is paid and it's targeted at people like myself or even internal IT teams that manage many different servers, including if those servers are at different locations. It's a NAS fleet management, a true NAS fleet management tool. And if I give you a quick look at it, uh, something interesting is, is how you tie these systems to it. 
and this is the portal, iXSystems.com. Like I said, this is still some of the early release of it. I believe you can sign up for a demo of it still. I, I've been working uh, internally, the FreeNAS team, um, you know, back and forth talking to them about this particular demo and learning about how it works so I can do some videos on it. And it's neat because it uses WireGuard and I did that whole video diving into WireGuard. But it doesn't just use WireGuard to tie the systems together if you use their hosted. This actually has two options, by the way. Uh, they'll take care of the hosting for you or you can host it yourself. So there's uh, a Docker container you can build and set it up. I haven't done that part yet. I started right with their hosting. I wanted to see how it is. And no, it's not a free product. As I said, this is a paid commercial product targeted at business owners, or MSP or IT managers who go, I need to manage and look at the reporting of my fleet. But I have two of them tied to it and then my laptop right here tied to it. And let me show you something here. Let me exit out of this and we do an IF config. Here is the WireGuard, because yes, WireGuard is now built into TrueNAS, and you can use it for more things than tying it to this, but they built a nice automated way. When I get into the details of how to set it up, it's relatively easy, just pasting some API keys, and it uh, grabs the WireGuard config and loads it on your each NAS that you tied to it. And then you have your system tied to it to get into it. So instead of trying to tie it into some portal, IX Systems, when they do the hosting, they build a a WireGuard tunnel and a specialized server for you for the hosting, and then you tunnel into it over WireGuard. So there's not really any interface. Once you uh, get the WireGuard set up, then you log into that to handle all the transport layer. I should say there's not an interface specifically for the transport layer. It's all done over WireGuard. Once you tie your system to it, and I have my laptop and other systems tied to it, we can actually show you what the login looks like. And I thought it's worth mentioning right here. And what I'm gonna do is start at the dashboard of a system that's tied to the TrueNAS command is to show you an idea what it looks like. It shows that I'm connected. It shows the IP address of the TrueNAS command server. And something else kind of neat, we're just gonna pop up a new window right here without logged in. Takes a second, it's gonna refresh again and let me know. TrueNAS command is also controlling this one. Now, you notice it's a, a local IP address and then we can click on that IP address or we can do it here and go over to true command. And that is, automatically has to assume, and it does warn you here, that yes, you have to have whatever computer you're on connected. So uh, WireGuard, once again, is facilitating all of this. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue. And then there's another login. So it's not like WireGuard tying into it gives you automatic login, but uh, let's just show you what it does. And it's just pretty neat. So here's the two systems I have tied to it. And let's uh, dive into like this one right here. Here's the Mini 3 Plus. I can get stats on it, any alert notices, any issues that may have occurred. Um, I can switch to the other one here with the purple NAS that's running at home. Yes, there's some alerts on it. Uh, for some reason, it went offline. I, I know why I was rebooting things, but um, rebooting firewalls that cause it to get dropped and disconnected. But uh, this is something that, like I said, once I start learning more about it, I'll be able to dive into it, but you can set alerts, thresholds, uh, do reporting, and it'll report out on your fleet. Uh, the licensing for this, they have prices, I think, listed on their site. I'm, I think, I don't know. Uh, but it's something I want to throw on people's radar that it's a really cool up and coming feature uh, from a management standpoint to be able to be able to see everything, your whole fleet and manage alerts, statuses. It can tell you if a jail went down or anything else, uh, all those notices in one dashboard. Overall, I'm really happy with the uh, TrueNAS 12 and all the progress is coming. Yes, I'm as excited as everyone else of who's gonna be asking me about TrueNAS scale. I'm looking forward to the release of that as well. I'll leave links to the details, the level one tech video, and of course the changes. And uh, all right, have fun, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.